Okay, we are recording. All right. Hey, everybody. My name is Sam. This is the Bluegrass Council of the Blind AT Seminar for December 2022. Today, we're going to be talking about kitchen gadgets, accessible kitchen items, even some helpful tips and tricks for being successful in the kitchen. The holidays, that's the best time of the year to be in the kitchen. So we're going to talk about that today. Before we get started, though, if you guys would like to see more in our assistive technology series, definitely check out our YouTube channel, the Bluegrass Council of the Blind YouTube channel. You should find it in the link or you should find it linked in the description of this video. We have we have all kinds of great videos there on our YouTube channel, not just assistive technology, but also having to do with our other programs. If you would like to reach out to us directly, have any questions, you want to set up an appointment, you can visit our website, bcbky.org, or you can send us an email, info, I-N-F-O, at bcbky.org. You can also give us a phone call. The phone number is 859-259-1834. All right, let's get going here. We got a lot to talk about. I've got tables full here of stuff to talk about. But as I said, so we have, there's like basically three things, three categories we're going to talk about. Uh, accessible kitchen items, things that are specifically made to help us in the kitchen. There are things that we can do to certain items in the kitchen to make them easier to use. And then there's some tips and techniques that we're going to talk about that anybody can use to just make your life a little bit easier in the kitchen. Uh, first, let's talk about the accessible gadgets, gadgets that are made specifically for the blind and visually impaired to help them in the kitchen. A lot of gadgets these days talk to us. Uh, so talking, our phones talk to us. Sometimes even our cars talk to us and things like that. Well, the kitchen is very similar. So one item that I use and I love and I use it all the time is a kitchen thermometer. This is a food thermometer. And so you can insert the long probe here into your food, like a steak or chicken. Chicken is very important to test with the uh, when you're cooking chicken. And then if I press this middle button here, so it is 83.1 degree Fahrenheit in here. It is kind of warm in my studio. <laughs> uh, so this is fantastic. It can do Fahrenheit. It can do Celsius. And it just makes it easier to know when your food is done. So, for example, chicken. If you want it to read at least 160 to 165 Fahrenheit. That way you know it's safe to eat. Uh, let's see. Another item is some large print measuring cups. These are cups that have the measurement written in large print on the inside, and it's also high contrast. It's, it's white letters on a blue background. They have measuring cups. They also have measuring spoons. So these have the, the measurement written on the, the handle here, but also in large print. Now, if you... If that's still not large enough, they even have color-coded measuring cups. So these are just different colors. So if you are going to need to need to get something in like a cup, one cup worth of dry ingredients, you know the green one is the one cup. Uh, the red one is the half cup. And you can just kind of mem memorize that to know what you need. Let's see. There's all kinds of choppers that we can use to make life easier. Uh, if you're not quite comfortable using a knife, then they have different choppers that you put your food into the little cup. 
And then when I put the cup back on here, if I can get it down on there, there we go. And if I press it down, you see the blade comes down and chops your food. That works really well. Here is a bit type of food processor that is hand, hand crank. So I can put my food into the container here. And then when I do the little plunger, it spins the blade and it will chop up the food nice and easily. And I don't have to worry about cutting it up. Another little trick when dealing with cutting things is instead of using a knife, you could use a pair of kitchen shears. So they're like scissors, but they are made specifically for food. And this is Pampered Chef. It makes these, but you can, you can find all kinds of them. And so that's going to make it easier to cut up your food. Um, instead of using a knife, you can just cut it like you cut up paper with scissors. This is, works great for vegetables, celery, carrots, uh, green onions, things like that. But it can't even work for meat, cutting up chicken. And some of these shears are even strong enough to go through bone. So if you needed to cut through some ribs or something like that, you can use your kitchen shears. Much easier. Another option is to use a vegetable peeler, uh, especially if you're making a salad and you just want to throw some carrot in there. You can, instead of chopping the carrot and using a knife, consider using a vegetable peeler to just peel off little ribbons of carrot and put that in your salad. It has the benefit of actually looking kind of fancy with little ribbons of carrot or ribbons of, of um, cucumber or whatever. Here is another device that was made specifically for the visually impaired community. This is called a liquid level indicator. Uh, there's several different, they go by several different name, brand names, but the basic name is just a liquid level indicator. And it has a battery and it has these two probes that stick out. And they, we've got a mug here, a coffee mug. They sit right into the mug. I think you can see it there. Yeah. It sits on the edge of the mug. And the way it works is when you're filling up your, your cup or your glass and the liquid comes up to the level where it touches these probes, then it completes the circuit and the device will start to beep. So that's how you know when to stop pouring. As soon as you hear the beeping, uh, you can stop pouring and you know you're right at the top of the cup. So that's kind of nice. Traditionally, most of us probably just put a finger in there to feel when you get to the top. But if you are pouring something like coffee or hot tea uh, or soup, something like that, you maybe don't want to burn your finger. So having a liquid level indicator is very helpful. We're going to come back and talk about those cups, those mugs here in a second. But I've got another item here. This is a um, cutting board, and it's just a normal plastic cutting board. But this one is unique because it is a high contrast cutting board. So on one side, it's white, and on the other side, it's black. And this is so if you have low vision and you rely very heavily on contrast, you can create great contrast on this cutting board. For example, if I was cutting up a red tomato, I might do it on the white side because that red on this white is going to be great contrast. But if I was cutting up a white onion, I'm going to flip it over and cut it up on the black side because the white on the black, great contrast. And it's going to make it easier to see what you're trying to do. So high contrast cutting board. These are fantastic. Oops, sorry, I'm making noise. So I want to, one little note also about using a cutting board. So I worked for many, many years in a restaurant and I learned very quickly to put something underneath my cutting board when I'm cutting up vegetables or whatever. 
And that is to keep the cutting board from sliding around. If you've ever tried to cut something and your board is wobbling or maybe it's spinning or sliding all over the counter, that's very dangerous. You really need a very stable base when you're cutting, especially when you're using a knife, because that's that's when you get into trouble is if the cutting board starts moving on you. So a very easy thing to do is to put a dish towel under there. You could even take um, some paper towel and, and get it slightly wet and lay that out flat, and that will keep it from moving around. Here in my house, I use some of this. I'll put it up against the cutting board. This is just drawer liner. So the stuff you would put underneath your silverware um, holder in your drawers. I cut a square of this out, and this is what I put underneath my cutting board. So my, my liner goes down, my board goes on top of it, and it keeps it nice and secure and keeps it from moving around on me. Another great trick for uh, someone with vision loss, if they are using a cutting board, I don't know if you've ever been cutting up onions or something that rolls around like cherry tomatoes or black olives. Those things just go rolling everywhere. And sometimes you, you can keep track of it. Sometimes you can't, you know, they go everywhere. So real quick trick. I learned this from a blind kitchen um, television host up in Canada. She suggested putting your cutting board into a uh, sheet tray, a half sheet tray. So, and then you do your cutting inside the sheet tray. That way, if something goes rolling off, it's going to hit the edge of the sheet tray and it's going to stay contained in your little area. This is a great idea. Uh, I do this all the time, especially when I'm cutting up black olives for Taco Tuesday, because <laughs> those olives go rolling around everywhere. And of course, I'm going to use the white side when I'm cutting up black olives. Okay. Now, speaking of contrast, um, contrast for low vision, contrast is king. We use contrast all the time. High contrast items are easier to see, and we can use high contrast in the kitchen as well. Lots of great opportunities to use high contrast. For example, if I bring over my coffee cup again, I have a white coffee mug and I have a black coffee mug. So, or a dark coffee mug. If I am going to be pouring a cup of black coffee first thing in the morning, which one do you think I should use? <laughs> I'm going to be grabbing the white coffee mug because pouring that dark liquid into my white mug, it's going to give me a lot of contrast. I'll be able to see relatively well how how tall I mean, how high i'm getting with that coffee that dark coffee in this white mug i'm going to be able to see that much easier than i can in the dark mug the dark mug as soon as it goes in there it just disappears i don't have any idea how much i'm putting in there so contrast contrast is also very helpful when you're talking about your plates or bowls So for example, I have this monkey plate <laughs> that belongs to my daughter. She's 17 now, but this was hers when she was little. She used to love to eat her food off her monkey plate. And they're fun. Um, but you could also think of this as a regular plate with maybe a floral pattern or geometric designs or something like that. Uh, they're very decorative and they're great, but when eating on one of these plates with low vision, it's very difficult because it's hard to see our food on top of this very busy pattern. Um, you can imagine some peas and a piece of chicken and some mashed potatoes. Uh, those peas are just going to get completely lost. I'm going to get con confused because of this monkey pattern. So what I always recommend is just getting plain, solid color plates and bowls. Uh, it doesn't have to be boring, like these plates have a little decorative ring around the outside, a colored ring, and that's fine. That's that's not a very complicated pattern. But for the most part, the bowls and plates are white, just solid white, solid color. 
And so that makes it so much easier to see my food sitting on top of here. I can tell what everything is because there's not a busy pattern kind of messing it with me there. So solid color plates, whatever color you want. Another quick trick when it comes to using plates and things like that is um, keeping track of your food. You can also use segmented plates. So these are plastic trays, kind of, they remind me a lot of when we were in school, elementary and stuff, those same kind of plastic segmented trays. But you can actually buy these. Uh, you can even buy paper plates that are segmented like this. And so this is a great option for somebody, especially if somebody's totally blind, keeping all of their food separate so that, for example, we we're talking about having peas. I can put my peas into one of these sections and I know my peas aren't going to go rolling around all over my plate, getting mixed in with everything else. They're going to stay in this little section. And it's also a great way to for the totally blind person to orient on where their food is, because you could even give these segments uh, numbers. So the big segment maybe is number one and then left to right on the top two, three, and four. So when you're serving the food, you could say, all right, honey, you know, your chicken's in number one, peas are in number two, mashed potatoes in number three, your rolls in number four. And then the blind person knows exactly where all of their food is without any problems. So segmented plates. Um, I don't use them here at home, but what I do is if I have my food on my regular plate, for example, peas, mashed potatoes, and chicken, I will put my chicken and my mashed potatoes on the plate, and then my peas I will put into a little small side bowl. Uh, these are little cocktail bowls, oftentimes, oops. In restaurants, you, they call them ramekins, just a small little container. I will put my peas in here, or I'll put my applesauce in one of these, and I'll have that just on my plate because, once again, it's much easier for me to keep track of all of my peas if they're in one little bowl like this and not just rolling all over my plate. So consider that, you know, you could have multiple little containers sitting on your plate, and once again, that makes it easy for the person who's serving to say, all right, your peas are in the little bowl. Okay, what now, what now? So, so many cool things. Um, little items, for example, to make things easier, chopping once again, you can get little things like this, which is an apple cutter. And this is an all-in-one, you just, push it down over the apple and it cores the apple and then slices it into wedges. Uh, and so this is an easy thing you could use for apples. You could use it for potatoes, lots of different things. Another great uh, kitchen tool is the hard boiled egg cutter. That works fantastic for things like mushrooms. If you needed to slice some mushrooms for a salad and uh, you can use that and it, you don't have to deal with a knife and it makes it so much easier. Olives, I should start using that for my olives for Taco Tuesday. <laughs> All right, what else do we have? So we have different, I've got some measuring cups here. These are actually for liquid. Let me get them all separated. We have um, a full one cup measuring cup, a half cup and a quarter cup. And these are, they're not exactly the most low vision friendly. They do have the markings on the sides, but they're not the easiest to see. I will, I will say that. But one thing I love about these is that they are flexible. They're made out of silicone, probably plastic. And it makes it really easy to pour liquids after you measure them. So I can measure it out and then I can squeeze it into a nice pouring spout and then pour it in. And that makes it so much easier for me when I'm doing most of this just by feel. So these are great. Uh, what else? What else? Let's talk about some different shape items. So organizing in the kitchen, uh, a lot of us have these containers sitting on our countertop, one of these decorative containers that holds something like a spice or something. 
Well, I have uh, salt and pepper here, but, uh, or I'm sorry, this isn't pepper. This is uh, our tea. I brought tea. I meant to grab the pepper and grab the tea by mistake. But um, you can imagine if this was salt and pepper, these are both very similar. They're in the same design. It's a plastic, clear plastic container with a white plastic lid. But the difference is you can see that the salt is cir uh, circular or I guess um, cy uh, cylindrical and the pe uh, pepper or in this case tea is in a square shaped one. So they feel very different. You know, if these were, for example, salt and sugar, um, some of these spices you can tell by smell like pepper and salt, they're going to smell completely different, but sugar and salt, not, maybe not so much. Neither of them have a very strong smell, strong odor. So I can put them in a different shaped container to make it easier for me to identify them just by feel. So that's a great suggestion. Um, the containers, they still match. They still look like they belong together, but for me with low vision, them being different shapes helps out tremendously. Okay, and then finally, I want to talk a little bit about cooking, uh, the actual art of cooking the food that we've been talking about preparing thus far. Uh, there's a couple little tricks that we can use, things that might help you. Um, I often hear people talking about the stovetop. And a lot of us nowadays have the flat glass stovetop, and it's really hard to tell where the burner is. Um, generally, you can turn it on and you can kind of feel the heat of where the burner is, but that's not the safest thing to do. Uh, so there are options. There are electrical options that you plug in and they just sit on top of your counter and you can do the same thing. For example, using an electric skillet. Uh, this is just a one foot electric skillet, sits on top of your counter, plugs into the wall, and this part heats up. And you can do anything that you can do on the, on the stove top in a skillet, you can do on an electric skillet. And so this is a good option because this is up off the counter. Um, if I needed to find it, as a blind person, I could drag my hand along the counter until I hit the side and then gently go up and feel the handles. The handles don't get cold or don't get hot, excuse me. Uh, the lid fits right on top. So this is a much safer option for cooking uh, for a lot of people. So consider getting something like this. You can also get uh, electric burners. So it looks like the same burner that's on your stove, but it's a plug-in electric unit that sits on your counter. And then you could put the pot on top of that. And that is very similar as far as being able to use it much more safely than uh, your traditional stovetop. Something else I always recommend whenever I'm cooking, I don't know if you guys have ever been cooking like ground beef, for example, in a skillet, and you're stirring it up and you're trying to be careful, but inevitably you throw some stuff out the side because it's so shallow and maybe we don't have the best depth perception, <laughs> right? So I always make a mess. So what I do is I will actually use a stock pot and this is a heavy bottom stock pot. And this, I will cook my ground beef in here. I will cook up bacon in here. I mean, I'll cook just about anything I do in a skillet. I can cook in here. And the benefit of it is it's got nice, high walls here so I can be stirring that stuff up as much as I want and as as vigorously as I want and chances are I'm not going to throw any food out all over the stovetop and then you know burn food on top of my stove so I recommend using a a large stock pot or a deep stock pot um, even like scrambling eggs things like that you can do in here no problem Okay, guys, so that is really about it. That's kind of what we wanted to talk about today. Um, there's a lot more to it. I mean, we didn't even talk about um, full arm um, oven gloves, 
You know, we even have at BCB, a lot of this stuff we have at BCB to demonstrate and show you guys how it works. Uh, we even have these oven rack covers that go on the front of the oven rack. So if you reach in to grab something and you accidentally touch an oven rack, it's not going to burn you. It's very, very cool stuff. Um, so we have these things to show you guys. We're happy to have you come in and talk about these things and demonstrate them. And if you have any questions, once again, if you'd like to learn more about any, this or anything we do, please feel free to reach out to us both on the internet, www.bcbky.org, O-R-G, or through email, info at bcbky.org, or give us a phone call, 859-259-1834. But that is it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Until the next episode, we'll see you later.